We're back with another chapter. We're on lucky chapter 13. The last chapter was about the library, um, and we met the, uh, Mrs. Surlaw and her giant walrus. Um, today's chapter is called Umbrella. Sherry liked walking in the rain. She liked stomping through puddles in her yellow rain boots. Most of all, she left her umbrella, even if it did get heavy after a while. Her umbrella was purple with green stripes, or maybe it was green with purple stripes. She couldn't be sure. The whole thing was covered with yellow polka dots of various sizes. She liked listening to the raindrops bounce off of it. The harder it rained, the better it sounded. She liked the feel of the smooth, curved wooden handle. She was still a block away from school when she heard the whomp, whomp. Now she was going to be late. She had done too much puddle stomping and not enough straight ahead walking. She tried to hurry, but it was difficult to run while carrying her umbrella, especially in her yellow boots. By the time she reached the outer edges of the school, the eight-minute warning bell was already clanging. She counted the clangs and was disappointed. When they stopped at eight, she was hoping for a porcupine. Glancing down, she noticed the sidewalk around the school was dry. She stuck out one hand. The rain seemed to have stopped. She tilted the umbrella a little to the side and looked up. The cloud of doom had kept all the other clouds away, including the rain clouds. Sherry glared at the horrible cloud. It almost seemed alive as it turned and churned inside itself. Suddenly, a gust of wind tore the umbrella from her hand. Horrified, she watched as it bounced across the blacktop toward the school. She chased after it. The umbrella hit the bike rack and stuck there for a moment. But just as Sherry got there, it swooped upward. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen here. She jumped and managed to grab the curved handle. The umbrella continued to rise. She thought about letting go, but she didn't want to lose her umbrella, so she held on with both hands. Then, when she passed the second floor window, so she's just going up, she realized she probably should have let go sooner. When she ro rose past the third floor window, she definitely wished she had got let go on the second floor. And when she reached the fourth floor, she wished she had let go when she was back on the third floor. By the time she reached the sixth floor, it was definitely too late. Her left rain boot slipped off when she passed the ninth floor, and she watched it fall all the way down. Higher and higher, scarier and scarier, she passed the 17th floor, the 18th, and the 20th. There was no 19th floor. She could see inside the classroom windows as she went. Some kids waved at her. She couldn't wave back. She couldn't risk falling. She's got both hands on her. Although the alternative wasn't much better. As she continued to hang on, she realized she'd be sucked into the cloud of doom. She passed the 25th floor, and then the 26th, and then the 27th. She knew the floor numbers by the teachers she saw through the windows. At the 30th floor, she could see her own desk next to the window. The window was open. She closed her eyes and jumped. A horn blared. When Sherry opened her eyes, she lay sprawled across the top of her desk. Hmm, you are here, said Mrs. Jules. Funny, I didn't see you. I was just about to mark you absent. Were you sleeping? Maybe it was a dream. She hoped so. If not, her favorite umbrella was lost forever. She felt her, and her left foot felt cold. On her right foot, she wore a yellow rain boot, but on the left was just a thin red sock. Must not have been a dream. Well, that cloud of doom is pretty crazy. The next chapter is called Mr. K and Dr. P. I don't know what is going on there, so make sure you tune in next time for our next chapter. Bye, guys.